Okay, well, for those of you that are on tonight, um, thank you for getting on to tonight's equine webinar series. My name is Grace Kim, the equine extension assistant for um, the 4-H office. So tonight's topic is over horse trailer safety and maintenance. If you guys have any questions um, throughout the webinar, you are, you, you are free to type in the chat or unmute yourself at a good time. Otherwise, we will take any questions at the end. So the beginning is what I want to, I would like to start with is why. Um, having, knowing your safety and maintenance with horse trailers, um, if you don't know a lot about it, you can, it can result in bad outcomes. Um, you would always want to be knowledgeable when trailering your horse and or a lot of people um, think of their horses as family. So making sure that they are safe and for your own family to be safe while trailering large animals. Um, and horse trailers are for um, horse shows, trail riding, if you need to go to a horse show, having that availability of having your own horse trailer really um, is nice because it's hard to find those rides from other people. And then also for emergencies, um, we always like to count on our vets being able to come to our barn to come take care of take care of our horses. But in some situations, vets are not able to solve or treat all horses um, at the barn. So have, being able to have that mode of transportation to take your horse to, let's say like K-State for surgery or another university or another vet clinic to get um, that treatment and to get it quickly. I wanted to first um, talk about is buying a trailer. Um, some things that people don't think about when they're looking for their own trailers would be making sure um, the weight of the horse and trailer or horses you plan to put in it does not exceed the towing vehicle. So just make sure that, you know, you see those large SUVs hauling trailers making sure that the weight of the horse trailer, which normally the weight of the horse trailer is listed on the horse trailer, along with if you estimate about 1,000 pounds, 1,200 pounds per horse, um, that combined weight does not exceed the weight of the towing vehicle because um, you don't want, they normally can pull, but normally if that load is bigger than the actual vehicle, it, that vehicle cannot stop that weight that is behind it. Other things to think about are height and width of your trailer. So a good ample height would be about seven to eight feet with a width of six to eight feet um, for horses being hauled. They, the general rule is you want to get an interior height of your trailer to be around 10 inches taller than your horsey, your horse's resting head position. So if you have a huge thoroughbred or warm blood, um, you might want to be looking out for those trailers that are that are made and made higher and taller and wider for those types of horses. Um, they also say the width of the trailer should allow around three inches of lateral movement side to side for when the horse is loaded. So they do feel comfortable, not suffocated or have too much room to move around and, and probably hurt themselves. Um, so really thinking about the size of trailer you would like. Um, and then also rubber mats. So depending on, um, I would, if you're looking at trailers, looking at the types of mats that are in the trailer that provide traction and cushion for when you are loading and unloading and traveling, um, or if you decide to switch out the mats in that trailer for something that you like better. Uh, making sure that you have quick release safety steps. So when you load your horse um, over by the window where you're putting that horse, you have those quick release safety snaps. Um, so your horse, in case of an emergency, can get out of a bad situation quickly. Um, other things that you can think about when you're buying a horse trailer um, are interior lights. If you like, if you know that you might have a lot of night travel and you want to check on your horses and make sure you can see well or exterior lights if you plan on needing that. Others would be air vents in especially in the horse area when you're trailering. And then just padding overall. Uh, you see some horse trailers with no padding on the inside. Um, 
specifically horse trailers like the one pictured have cushions between the dividers, um, front and back, uh, mats on the walls, the extra safety aspect of it. Um, other quick, other little things that you can think about would be the type of horse trailer, whether you want a gooseneck or a bumper pull, a straight load or a um, slant horse trailer. So they say that each type of trailer has specific benefits. So it just depends on what benefits you would like when, when purchasing a trailer. They say, for example, slant horse trailers seem to ride with horses that are in slant trailers seem to ride with less stress and um, tend to be more stable when you're going at a stop. Regular maintenance checks. So these are regular maintenance checks are considered. Um, these checks should be performed on a horse trailer every time it is used. So right before you go to a horse show, um, hopefully um, in emergencies, your, your horse trailer is already triple checked. Um, but making sure the tires um, have a minimum amount of at least a quarter of tread, depending on the Department of Motor Vehicles, um, they should have they should have the right tire pressure that is listed for those types of tires, no signs of cracks or dry rot, and also always make sure you have a spare tire um, along with your trailer. Also to make sure you have, you check your floorboards. So the one pictured here is in a stock type trailer, but a lot of trailers have um, floorboards which you can replace, but they're made out of wood. So you need to make sure none of the wood is rotted or in weak condition because they are holding the weight of the horse or horses. And to replace any boards that you think are questionable before um, you put a horse in there. And then also um, before and after every trailer ride, it is recommended that you sweep out, you hose, you let it air out um, your mats and your floorboards to keep that rotting or um, bacteria building there. Um, and then lights, so always checking your lights. There's always an extension to your truck to make sure your left left signal, your right signal, your brakes are all working. Um, I tend to do that right before I head out or even put my horse in the trailer to double check everything's working, um, which is also pictured here. You wanna check a lot of the lights around the trailer. Um, and then your safety chains, hitch lock chains. So this is a picture of an example of your safety chains, um, your hitch, hopefully it's nice and locked, but then also making sure your safety chains and your emergency brake is well clipped on, well um, working before you also uh, trailer. Your wheel chocks that people tend to put behind their wheels, they're not overused. You might need to get new ones if they're not able to do their job. And then just some other things would be um, making sure you have your jack or lug wrenches or your safety triangles or reflectors um, for in case of an emergency while you're trailering. Also other things to think about is to make sure all the screws, bolts and nails that are specifically inside the trailer where the horse is um, aren't protruding so a horse can't get hurt um, and should be removed or replaced. But similarly on the outside of your trailer, if you see anything that doesn't look right, Definitely get that checked out. Yearly maintenance checks. So hopefully you get these done the beginning of spring when hopefully that's when most of your trailering is. Um, making sure, I usually take mine in unless you have a pro at your place. Um, checking the frame of the trailer, make sure, making sure nothing's rusted. You don't have any holes anywhere, no soft spots in the frame repair or replace any rusted metal because that rusted metal is a soft spot for that trailer. Um, always grease hinges and springs. A lot of horse trailers have ramps, so making sure those springs and the ramps are nice and greased um, and working. Uh, the wheels pulled and the bearings checked and repacked. So um, this is a picture of a wheel being pulled and it's bearings getting checked and repacked. They tend to do that, you should do that every year. Um, something that's very important, you don't want your wheel to fall off or your bearings to get loose. So always get that checked. Um, brakes, um, your horse trailer has its own brakes, but it also has what we call an emergency brake. So here's pictured what would be on a horse trailer, this 
cable is where you would hook on um, to the uh, where the chains hook on. I did want to talk about um, other options. This chain is very um, is used a lot on horse trailers, but it can have other um, negatives to it or cons. So if you don't, um, if this chain is kind of loose and you have other things in the bed of the truck, um, there you can be put in a situation where your that chain could actually get caught on something in the bed of the truck and then get pulled on. Um, they do have these newer emergency brakes, brake chains. They're flexible. They retract a little bit because they have that coil to them. So it keeps it from hanging down in the bed or hopefully getting caught on something. So something to think about when you're looking at your trailer and any if you want any improvements to your trailer. So making sure all of these are these big aspects are checked yearly. Uh, before you travel for safety, um, good idea would be practicing loading. So if your horse doesn't go on a trailer a lot, maybe practicing couple times a week, getting your horse in the trailer, making sure they like the trailer, they don't have any, um, they're not nervous about going into that big metal box. Um, so that's, and then always before traveling, try to use a leather or nylon halter. Um, using leather or nylon, they are easier with, well, nylon with a breakaway piece. Um, in emergency situation, if a halter so like gets snagged of any sort, it can break away or break more easily and hopefully less likely to injure your horse's head or injure your horse in general. So something to think about. Um, leg wraps. I know some people like to protect their horse's legs while traveling. So you can do leg wraps, standing wraps. Um, some people do polo wraps. That's just dependent on what you would like. Um, also on the weather conditions too. If it's too hot, it might be too hot to wrap your horse's legs. Um, other things to think about before traveling are long distances. If you plan on traveling long distances um, between states, be sure you get your health certificates and Coggins. I know um, when you're traveling between states, you need a Coggins for proof of, proof of negative disease. Um, also, if you plan on overnights, you can um, contact the county extension offices. I listed here a web page that um, for Nebraska. It actually, this web page is a list of all the county um, offices that you can contact if you just write or put down what county you're looking for um, and the contact for that county. I'm sure other states also have that same that similar web page. And also, again, double check lights, double check everything is securely fastened. Hay bags are secure if you tend to um, put hay bags with horses. Make sure there's good ventilation, especially in the summer when it's very hot. Tire pressure, again, you'll never, you can never be too safe when traveling with your horses. Um, loading and unloading the horse. Um, make sure your trailer is secured because when you get a horse in and out, a thousand pound animal, you want to make sure that trailer isn't going anywhere. It's always better to have two or more people um, for any sort of reason in case you need to hold a horse, the other one needs to go open the door. Um, always two is better. Cotton or leather, leather lead ropes are always recommended for for um, horses. So um, nylon leads tend to, if something happens, like your horse pulls on you, nylon leads will normally blister, burn, or cut your hands really quickly. Um, never climb under or over dividers, chest bars, or a horse. Um, that can scare a horse. You can get caught in between horse horses. You can get severely pinned between horses. So always make sure you do not do any of that. Um, some horse trailers also have butt bars or chains. Um, make sure that is always secure before tying the horse's head. Um, you don't want that horse to start backing out and you trying to stop it before um, you get your horse tied up or anything. Um, you can use a quick release knot before tying your horse's head. So this is a picture of a diagram of how you would essentially tie a quick release knot. But then also when you tie that quick release knot, always make sure that the horse has enough room to move his head, um, they use their head for balancing, especially if they're gonna go, they're gonna experience stops, turns, and 
go in acceleration, so it helps them to balance. Always untie the horse before lowering the butt bar so they don't freak out and start pulling on that halter. Always try to back the horse straight out of the trailer. It helps with balance. Um, and it just helps um, the horse be more secure in backing and being okay with that. Do not stand right behind a horse and or the back of the trailer when someone is trying to back a horse. You never know how quickly some horses try to get out of there in that metal box. They try, some of them just come out of there like a bullet. So you never want to be in that way. And some, some say after long trailering distance, after you get that horse out of the trailer, maybe walk them around, get that circulation flowing from standing so much and they can get that blood flow back into their legs. During traveling, um, some safety aspects for your turns, your accelerations and your stops. You should be very slow, very steady. Um, always brake more than you think you need to. Try not to exceed the speed limit. You're taking, you know, say a 5,000 pound trailer with a 1,200 pound horse. You don't really need to go speeding over the limit. And like I said, always allow for extra stopping distance. You never know if the car in front of you, if the semi in front of you is going to stop on a dime. So always um, make sure you have extra stopping distance. Uh, they say not to throw out any thing out the towing vehicle. So if you, they say don't throw out any cigarettes, water bottles, it's also not good in general, but um, that can always come back and hit your horse if you happen to have the window down or get into the horse area if you throw anything out those windows. And if you're traveling long distances or if you make stops, always check on your horses at every stop or they say about every 100 miles. Check your hitch, check your safety chains, um, check your hay bags, and if you can, offer your horses a drink of water. Um, they tend to um, lose some water weight, especially during long distances. And if you can avoid backing a trailer, you never know where you're at. Um, but if you have to have someone stand outside so you don't hit something or jackknife yourself with the horses in it, it's just easier when you have that second person to guide you. Other precautions, um, people, or if you have a horse trailer that has ramps, Lowering the ramps, um, when you do that, please keep your feet and hands out of the way. Those ramps can get real heavy sometimes. Um, and then if you happen to have your horse tied outside of the trailer, those ramps should also be put upright in, in the closed position. Horses can um, tend to, you know, get stuck. They can get a foot stuck easily, especially if that ramp is the right height. They could really injure their legs. Um, never leave oh, that should say leave, I'm sorry, a horse tied outside to a trailer unattended. You never know, something will freak out a horse, they'll pull back, you just never know what will happen. So always, so always have someone with a horse at the trailer. Um, pack first aid kits, um, human and or horse. We actually had an, a webinar a couple weeks ago over equine first aid kits that you can make or supply and where to put them. So it's always nice to have a first aid kit because you never know what will happen. Also to have in your trailer, um, I like to have a lug wrench and or tire iron along with a pressure gauge. So if you happen to stop by a, um, a semi gas station and you can check your tires and you see that one's a little low, you can always fill it up. Um, always have emergency numbers available so you don't have to search or Google anything for emergency numbers or ask others. And then always have extra halters, lead ropes, um, Horses tend to break one of the two and always having extra, you can have one there and you won't have a problem about somehow leading your horse from one place to another. And then I always like to have cones. Some people have flares, um, never keep that in the horse trailer because um, that depending on heat and temperatures um, that could start fire. So always bring that, um, don't ever leave that in the trailer. I tend to have cones. So if you get stuck on the side of the road, you can put out cones so people can identify that you are in the area or on the side of the road too. Um, any questions for any of our participants today? Um, I know I went through that a little quickly, but um, you are always welcome to 
go back to this recording and uh, on our equine YouTube page to rewatch any of the tips and things I've explained in this webinar. <laughs>